Hit Kickin' Country, Z94. It is a pleasure and delight to have Todd Starnes from Fox News on the air with us. Todd, thank you so much for stopping by South Georgia. Bill, greetings from the uh, far right side of the Fox News corner of the world. Wow, the far right side. It's got to be something, huh? <laughs> well, you know what? It's interesting. My office is right around the corner from Governor Huckabee's, and, and of course, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee, so they put the, the Southerners on the same floor. That sounds like a good thing. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's a blessing uh, because uh, I actually ordered a uh, Cracker Barrel rocking chair for my office. And so whenever folks come in for interviews, whether it be uh, you know a politician or a celebrity, I make them sit in the Cracker Barrel rocking chair. We just went to Cracker Barrel last night, me and my wife, by the way. So, did you you see, Bill? This is the problem with living in New York. It's sort of like being on the mission field. Uh, we don't have any Cracker Barrels. We got no Waffle Houses. <laughs> we don't even have a, a Sonic up here. Oh, yeah, I hear you. Well, we got it all. It's a beautiful thing living in the South. Well, Todd, you have really uh, rocked the boat here in South Georgia, particularly Statesboro, with what's going on in Bullock County. How did you initially come across this story and give us an idea of where we're at right now with it? Oh, geez, Lou, yeah, I didn't mean to stir up a hornet's nest down there, but uh, that's what happened. Um, gosh, a couple of weeks ago, I... Uh, got some information from some of our listeners on our Facebook fan page, and they live in the area, uh, and these uh, individuals had spouses that uh, work in the school system as teachers, and they uh, they told me some of the things that were happening, and also they uh, provided me with some local news coverage of this uh, sort of war on religious liberty that was being waged in the school district. All of this stems from a um, from a threat uh, by the Amer- by Americans United for the separation of church and state. Uh, they had raised some concerns about uh, prayers involving football coaches and players, and I believe the band director and uh, some of the musicians there. And uh, as a result of this, uh, there had been what the, at least what the allegations were uh, is that there had been a crackdown on religious liberty uh, within the school district. And um, there were a number of, of, of issues and items that they shared with me. Uh, one of those issues I thought was rather interesting, and it involved the allegation uh, that uh, a bulletin board that had been uh, filled with Christmas cards made by teachers had been removed from a public hallway and had been moved to an area that was not uh, accessible uh, by, by children. And uh, that particular story we did uh, caused a bit of angst, I think might be an understatement at the local school district. I think the superintendent uh, suggested that I was, uh, you know, somehow a terrorist. Yeah, that was a pretty wild allegation when we but, read, read that. But you know what I found was interesting about that whole thing, Bill, uh, is the, uh, the statement the superintendent, uh, you know, gave about, about my report. And yet I don't recall him using any harsh language towards Americans United for the separation of church and state, and those are the folks that ultimately are responsible for all of this. One of the things that the uh, superintendent mentioned, he said there was a legitimate personal privacy concern raised by one of the school staff's members that he's not giving any information about. And it's really making people scratch their head trying to figure out what exactly is going on uh, with this particular staff member and what does this staff member want? Well, a... You know, if you were to believe the school system, they think I made the entire thing up, that just out of the blue, uh, you know, a columnist, a writer here in New York City decided to pick on Bullock County and make up this entire thing. Uh, And that is just simply not the case. So we were, uh, we had actually, the week, we had been holding this story, Bill, for about a week. Uh, We had called the school district. Uh, the school district would not let us talk to the superintendent. They referred us to the spokesperson. And the spokesperson told us that there would be a statement coming the following week, which would have been last Monday. And so that's you know that's what we were waiting on. So uh, you know the idea that uh, you know that we didn't try to contact the school district is is incorrect. And people need to know that because there was a huge write up with the superintendent uh, basically saying that uh, you never contacted him and and there was uh, there was no communication whatsoever. So that's something that's a a big deal right there. Um, um for sure. And you know Bill another interesting component of this story is this uh, idea that there was a privacy concern uh, on the you know that uh, on the on the Christmas card bulletin board. Here's the question I have. This was a voluntary bulletin board. You, you know, teachers weren't forced to put up these cards. So if, in fact, a teacher had a problem with the privacy concern, why did that teacher put her private information on that, uh, on, on that bulletin board?
You know, one of the things that a lot of uh, listeners uh, bring up to me and people that I talk to regarding this case, it's really hitting home for them. Because, we, you know, we're in South Georgia, we're in the Deep South, we're in the Bible Belt, and we hear stories on Fox News and other news outlets about all uh, of this crackdown on Christianity and religious liberties all across the country from New Jersey to New York. And, and, and in the back of your mind, you always say, well, it couldn't happen here in, in, in South Georgia. We could never imagine it happen. And we're definitely a big part of this now. It's happening really everywhere, even in some of the most conservative areas in the country. Bill, you're absolutely right. And some of these organizations, these national groups, are intentionally targeting smaller communities because they know that they don't have the resources to fight back. And in many cases, uh, they may not be aware of the law. You know, local educators may not be aware of the law. Uh, that's why I understand the, um, uh, the, a group called the Liberty Institute uh, brought attorneys in uh, and they're going to be working with local people in Statesboro to fight back against this and to, to make sure that uh, the, the rights of these school teachers are, are upheld. Uh, one of the things that really troubled me and troubled the attorneys as well, and again, these attorneys actually met clandestinely with teachers who are so scared, they're so terrified of losing their jobs, they don't want to come out and, and say anything in public. And uh, you, the attorneys tell us that these teachers were told they, they have to turn their backs if, if young people are praying in a classroom, they literally have to turn their backs and cannot participate in that prayer. You know, what kind of a message does that, uh, does that send to these boys and girls when they see their teachers doing that? And student-led prayer, especially during football games in the South, is such a major part of, of living here and experiencing uh, South Georgia and, and expressing those religious liberties. And I... Uh, and that's one thing that's really kind of puzzling people. People think, well, maybe we're not supposed to do this. Maybe there's a law somewhere forbidding us to do this, and that is not the case. Well, you're absolutely right, Bill. It's not the case. And, and, and again, unfortunately, many educators, A, are either ignorant of the law, or B, they just don't want to get involved in some sort of, of lawsuit. But, again, what kind of message does that send to the boys and girls? What a great opportunity for a civics lesson, a real-life civics lesson, to see their educators standing up for the First Amendment and doing whatever it takes uh, to defend religious liberty. Because quite frankly, it concerns me that any school official, any elected official, would somehow put a price tag on our freedom and say, you know what, it's just not worth the money to defend that. Todd Starnes from Fox News, thank you so much for reporting on this and bringing it to everybody's attention. The uh, school board meeting that we had uh, this past week was uh, packed to the gills, thanks to people like you who bring who are bringing the this to everybody's attention, and uh, we're hoping that, uh, for a really good outcome. They do plan on making a decision, the school board here, in the next couple of days as far as what they're going to do with all of this. Well, and I think the most exciting thing to see are people engaging in the system and, and, and defending their rights, and that is a good thing, whether it's in Statesboro or whether it's in New York City or Los Angeles or wherever. And that's what it's going to take if, if folks are going to hold on to that freedom to, to, uh, to worship freely. Todd Starnes from Fox News, thank you so much for stopping by and talking with me today. Well, thanks a lot. Glad to do it.